afternoon, everyone. I thank you. Do not have any opening comments, so Matt, I'm happy to be here. Happy Wednesday. Okay. That to say. Let me get my let me get my recording. Here. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, what? So, all right. So, what can you tell us about uh, this uh, hack? Uh, the infiltration of at least the State Department email? Uh, I can say that last month the State Department detected uh, anomalous activity. Um, we did two things immediately. One, we took immediate steps to secure our systems, and two, uh, took immediate steps to notify Microsoft of the event. Uh, as a matter of cybersecurity policy, we do not discuss the details of our response. The incident remains under investigation, um, and we continuously monitor our networks and update our security procedures. Well, can you just explain to those of us who are technologically illiterate what anomalous activity is? That might be the blind leading the blind um, in, 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 in this instance. Um, I will say that um, uh, an anomalous uh, incident, I don't want to get into the details because it does remain uh, under investigation, and, um, but, but it is, it is, it is, it is, it is like it's returned because they're on vacation. It is activity in which um, uh, uh, an actor is attempting to or is successful in breaching our systems. Um, uh, we discovered it, discovered it last month, and as I said, immediately uh, took steps to secure our systems and then also notified Microsoft. And were they successful in breaching the systems? Uh, I am not going to um, speak in any detail about the, the underlying event. Okay, and this happened, you discovered this before or after the Secretary's trip to Beijing? Uh, I, uh, I'm not at liberty to say the exact uh, date other than that, that it was last month. Um, and do, do you have a reasonable suspicion about who might be behind it? We have not yet made a public attribution. Yeah, I know. I've certainly I know. I've certainly noted. We've certainly noted the attribution that Microsoft uh, has made for the exactly. incident. Do you but have as any reason, but on do you have any reason to doubt? No, but on behalf of the U.S. government, we have not made our own attribution at this point. But you have no reason to doubt. No, but okay. that's not the same thing as us confirming with our own attribution. I'm not of course. saying it I, is. I'm just saying you don't have any reason. We understand. We understand each other. I mean, you, you don't think it's like, I don't know, people from the Falkland Islands. I do not believe it's people from uh, Falkland Islands. Okay, thank you. Um, Can you say the target of specific people or bureaus within this building? I cannot, I can't get into that level of detail. And is this something that the United States plans to raise with the Chinese if you make the attribution that they're the ones behind it? Um, I would not want to say um, who we might raise it with before we've publicly made such an attribution. And when is that happen? Jenny. Jenny, go, Jenny, go ahead. Thank you, Matt. Uh, as you know, North Korea uh, launched long-range ballistic missiles from Pyongyang into the East Sea yesterday, I think uh, last night, U.S. time, just three days after North Korea warned that it would shoot down a U.S. reconnaissance, I mean, reconnaissance aircraft. <laughs> Why does it say that uh, today uh, this launch is a brazen violation of uh, multiple UN Security Council resolutions? How would you comment on uh, State Department? Comment? I would say that the United States strongly condemns the DPRK for its test of an intercontinental ballistic missile. Uh, the President's national security, security team is assessing the situation in close coordination with our allies and partners. Uh, Secretary Blinken will see uh, uh, a number of those allies and partners while at the ASEAN summit the next several days. The launch uh, is a brazen violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions and need needlessly raises tensions and risks destabilizing the security situation in the region. Uh, it demonstrates that the DPRK continues to prioritize its unlawful weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missile programs over the well-being of its people. And finally, we urge all countries to condemn these violations and call on the DPRK to come to the table for serious negotiations. Yeah. However, uh, the UN Security Council has not properly uh, adopted the statement. And uh, fundamentally, what role do you think the State Department needs for peace? 
What, 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 I'm sorry, what? The State Department need for the I, I wouldn't want to, to, to uh, call, yeah. The sanctions? I, I wouldn't want to, to speak to any future actions from, from the podium but today. But you have your own sanctions right now, right? We do. Yes, yes, but you have additional sanctions regarding this launch, or? No, not that I I'm, I'm, uh, have any ability to preview today. Sa Saeed, go ahead. Thank you. Switching to the Palestinian issue, uh, first of all, just to follow up on my question yesterday about the sub Lebanese family that was evicted from uh, its home in Egypt. So I wonder if you, have, if you had a chance to look at the issue and if you have any comment on that. Uh, I did, and I will say that we have been clear that it is critical for Israel and the Palestinian Authority to refrain from unilateral steps that exacerbate tensions and undercut efforts to advance a negotiated two-state solution. And that certainly includes evictions of families from homes in East Jerusalem in which they have lived for generations. Does that rise up to the level of a war crime? You know, evicting people from their home by force and that was given to the settlers like an hour later or something. I, I will just say, as I said, that we believe it is um, uh, critical for uh, Israel and Palestinian Authority to refrain from such steps. And couple of other issues. Uh, there was uh, an article by Thomas Friedman uh, in which he claimed that there, the U.S. is reassessing of uh, its policy toward the Netanyahu government. Are, are, is there any reassessment going on in your view? Uh, no, there's been no talk of any kind of formal reassessment. Uh, the United States and Israel share a special bond, and our enduring commitment to Israel's security is ironclad. Uh, our partnership is based on shared democratic values and shared interests. Um, but I will say, like in most relationships, we have our differences and concerns. And you've seen, uh, uh, we, we've talked about how we raise those differences and concerns with them privately, and we've, you've seen the President and others from the administration talk about them publicly. No, I don't think you have shared values. You don't evict people from their homes and uh, so forth. Uh, anyway, he says, uh, you know, it's not a joke, he said that, you know, the, the government is doing all it can to basically make, you know, this restriction, the restriction as he calls it, uh, call for a two-state solution completely, you know, unattainable by any measure. Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, those are his words, not ours. I would say that, uh, as the President uh, reiterated, even just this weekend, the United States remains committed to a two-state solution. Yeah. He also says on, on the visa waiver, he says, you know, if a settler from Hebron is granted a, a visa, a, a visa waiver to come to the United States, would you grant the same thing for the people that live in Hebron, the Palestinians that live there? I, I would just say with respect to the visa waiver program, what I've said before, without getting into any kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, hypotheticals, that, that at this time Israel does not meet all of the visa waiver uh, program eligibility requirements. We support steps that would be beneficial for the U.S. and uh, uh, Israel. Uh, one such step is working together for Israel to fulfill all the requirements of the visa waiver program, but that's not where we are today. Lastly, uh, 14 senators um, are holding nominations and so on. They, or they vowed to hold nominations, approving no nominations, uh, confirming nominees, um, until such time that the Biden administration goes back on its decision to be not to fund like Ariel University and the West Bank and so on. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I, I would just say two things about it. One, that the guidance that you refer to is simply reflective of the longstanding U.S. position reaffirmed by this administration that the ultimate disposition of the geographic areas which came under the administration of Israel after 1967 is a final status matter. So, oh, we are just reverting U.S. policy to where it was before 2020. Um, I don't recall uh, nominees of previous administrations, including Republican administrations, being held up over this policy. Um, there are a number of our nominees uh, on the floor right now waiting for votes. Uh, in mo the, the vast majority, I think it's 26 <coughs> out of 27, are career foreign service officers uh, who are waiting to, to be confirmed to posts that are essential uh, are to, to our national security. So um, we certainly hope that um, uh, uh, senators will not move to place holds on those nominees. Was that a ploy by the, the Republicans to sort of blackmail this administration on this issue? I, I, I won't characterize it any any way other than say other than to say that um, it is a detriment to our national security when we see our our nominees for critical posts being uh, held up, especially for issues unrelated to their qualifications, their service, or the job that they will be performing. If you're reverting to the previous to pre-Trump administration 
policy. Uh, why aren't you on this on this specific issue? Why don't you move the embassy back to Tel Aviv? Um, why don't you reinstate the findings or the determination of the, the Hansel Memorandum about the legality or the legitimacy of the settlements? If it's open, if it's an open question for this, which it obviously is because you reversed it. Why not do those? Um, I, I will say, with respect to to um, the Hansel memo, that's just as we've talked about before. That's just not a step that we have uh, uh, taken at this point. Yeah, I know, but, but you've taken this other step, right? And to and go to, to reverse course, we have. And I don't want to preview what we may or may not do. I want to say what we may or may not do in the future, but it's not a step that we've taken now. And we believe the embassy uh, uh, is appropriate is appropriate where it is today. What about the consulate? I don't, have any, any, I don't have any, any com any comment any on that. Um, go ahead. Um, a question on the House Foreign Affairs Chairman McCall subpoenaing Secretary Blinken yesterday related to key China documents uh, previously requested the use in May. What led to the issuing of the subpoena between then and now? Let me say a few things. One, um, as a general uh, principle, the State Department is committed to working with congressional committees to appropriately accommodate their need for information to help uh, them conduct their oversight responsibilities. Um, we have been acting in good faith with, in, in conversations with Chairman McCall's staff. Um, we think it's unfortunate and unproductive that they issued this uh, subpoena while we were in conversations with them. Um, I, I would note, as I noted the last time we talked about a, a subpoena from this committee, that um, courts have made clear that they ex expect congressional committees to engage in a good faith back and forth negotiation pro uh, uh, process with the administration when it comes to access to documents. From our perspective, we were in the middle of that process um, and we're evaluating the committee's request with an eye toward turning over uh, some documents when they issued this very sub subpoena. Um, so we will, of course, um, uh, continue to, to try to respond to their requests in a timely manner. Uh, we have to balance that with the growing number of congressional inquiries we've gotten, including from this committee, um, and the committee's shifting priorities when they issue um, uh, a range of, of document requests. So um, we will continue to try to work with them to, to meet their legitimate needs while balancing um, the fact that we have to, to fulfill other requests as well. And what was the, the sticking point that led to this subpoena? What you know, kind of stalled those negotiations? McCall said further obstruction and delay will not be tolerated. What are they looking for that they're now subpoenaing? You know, I, I don't want to litigate it publicly because I think it's appropriate that we have those conversations with them, them in private uh, at this point, although I will say, um, that we were in discussions with them and we're looking to, we're, look, we're, we're holding those discussions with an eye toward turning over documents when they short circuited the process and, and issued this subpoena. Um, I, I will also say that we have had um, 49 engagements with members of that committee uh, just since January. So we continue to have discussions with them. We have provided documents with them, uh, to them on other matters. And I, I would just say to the underlying claim that I've seen the committee and other members uh, on the Hill make about um, our actions with respect to the PRC. Um, we have done more to counter the PRC than any administration in recent memory. We are clear-eyed about the challenge and our actions um, back that up. Uh, since President Biden has taken uh, office, this administration has issued a record-setting number of sanctions, export controls, competitive actions with respect to the PRC. Um, and I will say, when I was in uh, uh, Beijing with Secretary Blinken, one of the things we heard over and over from Chinese officials is their deep protests and their deep complaints about the competitive actions that we have taken. And one of the things that we have uh, uh, that we made clear to them, that Secretary Blinken made clear to them, is that we stand by the actions that we have taken, and we will continue to impose uh, additional costs them uh, on on them when it's appropriate to do so. Up, yeah. uh, while we're on the congressional side of things, the <coughs> State Department delivered the letter to, uh, regarding Rob Malley to the committee yesterday. Have you received a response from the State Department as well? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I'm I'm call call yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, well, Chairman McCall wasn't very happy with the State Department's letter. Um, about the security clearance aspect of, of the whole thing, um, State Department, even when the investigation is over, still the State Department cannot, will not uh, turn over the um, information. 
Um, I don't want to speak to where we might be at the conclusion, and this, this is not with respect to, to Rob Malley, but with, with generally with respect to the conclusion of any investigation, what we might decide to do. Uh, I will note that um, in that letter, we made a few things clear. One, that there were some areas where we did think it was appropriate to provide them information. For example, with respect to personnel information, there are some things that we could provide them and we would look to do so, that we would engage with them to talk about policy matters, but that there are certain areas, um, uh, investigations um, uh, uh, are one, where there is lo the long-standing practice of the executive branch that is backed up by significant jurisprudence, including a Supreme Court ruling, in which it is not appropriate to turn over information to, to the Congress. No matter uh, the outcome of the investigation. I, I don't want to speak to where we might be at some point. Uh, As a matter down, of practice, down. even when the uh, investigation is over, whatever the result, you still will not cannot. I, I, I just don't want to speak to where we might be at some point down the road. I, I can speak to where we are today. Okay, what about the part that he is going to? He said he's going to ask the State Department for a um, confidential briefing uh, by Abram Paley and Brett McGurk. Is, is the State Department going to comply? Uh, as we said in the letter, um, uh, we uh, will engage with his staff about providing them um, uh, an update on policy matters. As you know, we have briefed uh, members of Congress a number of times. We had a, a, a briefing for all members of the Senate, um, I believe it was last month, might have been in May, um, on Iran, Iran policy, and we will continue to do so. But as we said in the letter, we are, are willing and, and look forward to engaging with them on that question. I don't want to preview what that engagement might look like, but it is something that we wanted to discuss with them. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, can you speak to some of the uh, security guarantees that were uh, announced today, particularly from the U.S. standpoint, what do they look like, and if there's a timetable um, to secure those guarantees that next administration will not be able to reverse them if they wish to? So let me say that a, a few things. Number one, that the statement that the G7 issued today um, uh, launched a process where we will begin bilateral discussions with Ukraine and other countries who are members uh, of the G7 will begin bilateral discussions with Ukraine about um, uh, long-term security commitments that we can make uh, to them. Uh, we have talked a lot um, in the 16 months since this war began about the um, uh, security assistance that we provided to Ukraine. And as you know, we continue to roll out new security assistance packages uh, all the time. But the focus of this um, uh, effort that was announced today is how we can put uh, Ukraine on an appropriate long-term footing to defend itself against not just the Russian aggression that they're suffering now, um, uh, but future Russian aggression. And so uh, it's going to focus on ensuring Ukraine has a uh, sustainable fighting force capable of defending the country, um, a strong and stable economy. And it will, as I spoke to yesterday when we were talking about the, the NATO communique, um, uh, focus on the help Ukraine needs to advance its reform agenda and support the good governance necessary to uh, advance its uh, European aspirations. So. I don't want to put any timetable. As I said, these are discussions that we are beginning with them and that other countries are beginning with them. I will say um, that one of the things we said in the, the, when the statement was released, that we, we collectively as the G7 said that we would welcome other countries join, uh, joining as well. We have already had other countries reach out to us and say they would like to join that statement and be part of this process going forward. Um, and so we welcome other countries um, uh, who are willing to step up to the plate to help secure um, uh, Ukraine's long-term future. And speaking of uh, other countries, uh, France, for instance, uh, announced uh, providing with uh, long-range uh, missiles. And of course, they also support uh, NATO membership. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a concern in this building that you are lagging behind allies when it comes to this particular Lagging behind allies, the United States is far and away the leading provider of security oh, assistance, oh, far and away the leading provider of security assistance to Ukraine. I don't think there is any such concern. Decisions around attackers did not come out uh, despite all the expectations. We have not made the decision to provide Ukraine attackums, but if you look at the full range of security assistance, I would put um, uh, the United States efforts behind no one and the numbers back that up. Thank you. Uh, President, President said that on membership, the President said that I'm, I look forward to the day when we are having the meeting to celebrate Ukraine's official membership in NATO. Did he mean uh, by the end of his first term? Uh, I, I, I do not want to um, uh, uh, try to add more texture to that. The President uh, made clear th uh, that 
uh, in the view of the administration, NATO membership is appropriate when the war in Russia is ended. We would obviously welcome that war ending tomorrow, and it could end tomorrow if Russia would withdraw its forces, but I don't think it's uh, uh, possible to put a timeline on that. I have a question. If, if it ends tomorrow, I, I, I'm not going to. You've already lost me with the hypothetical. You've already lost me the hypothetical. Let me, let, me get, let, let me go to someone else who hasn't had a question. I, I have to follow up on the, the State Department instituting anything different, anything new to prevent something like this from happening again? I would say, so the first thing we did was engage with Microsoft, um, whose systems were um, uh, at issue here. Um, and, but that said, we always look at uh, incidents such as this and seek to learn how to better protect our systems. And of course, we engage in conversation with the third party providers about how they can better protect the systems that they provide to us. And have you engaged with any, anybody in the Chinese about this issue? Uh, I don't have any conversations to, to read out. Let me, let me, Jenny, I've already, let me come back to you, Jenny, because I've already had a... Go ahead, on Janine. Israel and Janine issue, just going to follow up with uh, what I asked just the other day. And thank you, by the way, Matt, for taking my questions. I have a background to uh, the Janine question. Today, under Oslo, the Palestinian Authority pledged to disarm militias. The PA was granted a police force armed and trained by the United States for that very purpose. And first, what happened to the PA police force of thousands and their weapons? Second, why isn't the State Department publicly criticizing Abbas and the PA for not doing as they promised? And thirdly, I want to re re reiterate uh, my question from yesterday. Do you agree that the Palestinian Authority has full or shared blame for letting Janine become a terrorist haven industrial complex for weapons? Uh, I, I will say that, that uh, obviously it is the, the responsibility of the Palestinian Authority to conduct appropriate law enforcement operations uh, in its jurisdiction, but at the same time it is, the, the, it is appropriate for um, Israel to uh, take appropriate steps to defend its security. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, Janet, go ahead. Yeah, Russia's defense minister said that Russia would use the same weapons it is the U.S. provide munitions to Ukraine. How will you respond on this? That Russia would provide those those weapons? Or, or that, I'm sorry, that Russia would use those weapons? Yes. Russia has been using cluster uh, munitions I, since the beginning of this war and has been using them not just against military targets but against civilian targets as it has used other munitions against civilian targets. It's one of the reasons uh, that, that members of the administration came to the decision that it was appropriate to provide cluster munitions at this time because when you look at the, the, the risk of, du of, of, of um, duds, which is much smaller with the munitions that we are providing than the, the ones that Russia has used, Ukraine, at the end of this conflict, is already going to have to conduct demining activities anyway to deal with the number of duds that Russia has spread around the country by the thousands. So given that, it seemed like the appropriate decision for us to make. But that Russia using cluster munitions in this war would be nothing new, far I from it. That's what uh, Zelensky, President Zelensky said, uh, not to affirm it. Got it. Exactly. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, Matthew. On Maldives, Maldives election due in September, uh, observers characterizing the upcoming election in terms of a uh, contest of between influence between India and China, as former President Abdullah Yamin Trump had been characterized by an open door to Chinese investment, incurring massive Chinese debt and considerably corruption. So what is your comment on the upcoming election of the uh, I would just say an election in the Maldives is the same as an election anywhere that it's a matter for the, the people of that country to decide. Thank you very much. Um, just after we started the briefing, a notification popped up. It's from President Biden, and there's a special video of him and President Erdogan, and there's this message. President Erdogan, thank you for your courage, leadership, and diplomacy. Considering all the problematic points that you and I and also the other spokespeople talked about, would you argue that this is the best that the relationship has been between the two countries since the Biden administration took office? And what do you think the prospects of the bilateral ties could be? I would say that, that we have always made clear that we see Turkey as a, an important NATO ally. That has been clear from uh, the beginning. Uh, the President has made that clear. Obviously, we've had differences with Turkey over, over um, specific matters. We have differences with most of our allies over specific matters, and we deal with those, di uh, uh, those differences constructively, or at least we attempt to. So certainly, as the, the President said, we welcome uh, Turkey's uh, 
uh, decision to um, uh, to support Sweden's accession into NATO. It's something that we had encouraged them to do, and we were gratified that the president made that decision. Yeah. Um, so we're going back to the seven statement. Um, uh, so it says that, and, and you said that, um, you know, it says that um, each country will begin bilateral uh, negotiations. Um, but it also contains, uh, you know, some language that's clear that uh, states uh, that the countries, uh, the signatory countries, will come to Ukraine's aid in case of aggression. So is that already a commitment? Um, the, is, the, is the joint sentiment, statement already a commitment to, you know, a security commitment? Uh, and what is the end result of this negotiation? It, it, will, it will be a treaty. The, the commitment, uh, I would say yes, it is a commitment that we will come to Ukraine's aid as we have come to uh, Ukraine's aid in this conflict. The details of what that aid look like uh, are exactly what we and the other members of the G7 and other countries that join in uh, uh, will discuss. And can you say anything about the countries that have um Express desire to, to join. Uh, I don't have a I don't have a full list, but it's something that we will be making public in the, the coming days. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there are some reports that the U.S. stopped monitoring the coca cultivations in in Colombia. Do you have any? Uh, I'll have to take that one back. Yeah, take that one back. Yeah, go ahead. North Korea. Um, at at the ministerial meeting and ARS meeting, which secretary will join soon in Indonesia, what kind of message do you expect to send to North Korea following the recent launch of ICBM? I, I think that the secretary will um, send the, the same message that you heard the White House reiterate um, uh, today and that you heard me say uh, from this podium a few minutes ago, which is that we strongly condemn the DPRK for its uh, ICBM test. At the same time, we will make clear, as we have for some time, that diploma the door is open to diplomacy. Pyongyang has so far rejected uh, that offer for diplomacy. We would hope that they would reconsider, and we would hope that all countries, uh, including countries in the region, would condemn the violations uh, of UN Security Re Council resolutions and encourage the North Korea to come to the table for serious negotiations. Uh, China yeah. announced that top diplomat Wang Yi will join ASEAN ministerial meeting in Indonesia. And do you expect any meeting or engagement between Secretary and Wang Yi? Uh, I would say in the answer to that, we will be making the Secretary's uh, full schedule at ASEAN available tonight, um, including the bilateral meetings he'll be, have, be having with representatives of other countries. Yeah, okay. Come back to you next. Uh, Asper, Affairs Minister yesterday alleged that President Biden and the administration's statements on Israel are prearranged and coordinated with Israeli opposition figures to sp stoke protests against Israel's judicial reforms. Do you have any response to that allegation? Uh, I'd say it's absolutely not true. Um, Erdogan said today he was going to introduce the protocol for ratification for Sweden until Parliament's back in session in October. Does the U.S. view that as, this as an acceptable timeline? And will it impact a potential F-16 sale? Uh, I don't have any comment on the timeline other than to say that, um, uh, as I said, we welcome the president's support. We think that's serious. And we would urge it to happen as soon as possible. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. Alex, go ahead. Yeah. Secretary yesterday uh, spoke with the Armenian uh, prime minister. Clearly, he is remaining engaged, even though he's traveling right now. Is there any reason anything triggered that call? And is he trying to call to Azerbaijan as well? And if there's any upcoming meeting? Um, you guys are, uh, no meeting that has been scheduled uh, as of yet, uh, though we do continue to look t uh, forward to the next engagement uh, bet uh, between the ministers from both Armenia and Azerbaijan, but I don't have any update uh, to, oh, to uh, give. I appreciate it if you help me unpack a little bit the, the phrase that you guys have adopted uh, since May, which is um, what I call uh, the peace is within reach, agreement is within reach. Um, you know, English is my second language. And I'm trying to understand how to translate that into Azerbaijan and Armenian. If I put in the time frame, time frame, is it about months, two months, five months, when you say within reach, what do you mean? I, I can't help you with the translation, obviously, um, nor would I want to put a timetable on it. I will say what that we have meant when we say it's within reach is that they have made significant progress on a number of issues. Even in the last meeting, they narrowed the number of issues uh, that remain unresolved. And so we think with a dwindling number of issues to resolve, the agreement's within reach, but that uh, involves 
that would, of course would involve both parties being willing to compromise. Thank you. And I don't know if I may. The early push that Georgian Prime Minister was told uh, not to show up in Vilnius due to his criticism uh, of uh, NATO over the Ukrainian war, is that true? I'm just not aware of that. But why was it he not? Why was he not? I, I'm, uh, I'm just simply not aware. Uh, do, you have, uh, do you have any comment on the fact that Georgia was forgotten uh, from any statement that came out? Uh, I would say that Georgia is a steadfast NATO enhanced opportunities partner. It's a category reserved for NATO's closest partners. Um, and uh, on the United States' behalf, we continue to support Georgia's NATO aspirations. Georgia people and the Georgian government doesn't share that aspiration, it appears. I, I, I speak for the United States. Uh, a while back, I asked your predecessor, Ned, about uh, the case of this uh, Cambodian American woman, Terry. Terry uh, Seng, who's been uh, detained in Cambodia for hmm. many months now. Um, this morning, uh, he and Ned, uh, when I asked, uh, said that she should be released immediately. But he didn't have any kind of uh, he didn't have any information on whether or not uh, she had been de um, designated as wrongfully detained. Um, this morning, the UN Working Group on arbitrary detention came out with a, uh, a, a ruling, I guess, a, uh, saying that she has been uh, wrongfully detained. And I'm just wondering if you guys have any update on where her status uh, stands, if it, the case will be turned over to Spiha or if it's still just a consular affairs matter. Let me say a few things first before I, I get to that part, which is that, number one, uh, we reaffirm our condemnation of the conviction and six-year sentencing of human rights activist Sang Thiri, who did nothing more than peacefully express her opinions. Uh, we continue to call on the Cambodian uh, government to immediately release her, as well as to immediately release all individuals detained on politically motivated charges. Uh, Secretary Blinken has raised this issue directly with his Cambodian counterparts. Uh, and we continue to provide her with all appropriate consular services with, uh, during her detention. Uh, with respect to the question of wrongful detention, I will say that the process is still ongoing. We have not made a determination at this point, but we continue to review um, the totality of circumstances uh, in this case. Okay. Um, it, it, I mean, it was still ongoing when I asked about it before, I, which was a couple of months ago now. Yeah, and I say, how long, uh, you know, so she's not a basketball player, so it, uh, she's not a Wall Street Journal reporter, so it, uh, you know, so I would, it, it doesn't go very quickly. So let me just say in, in response to, to that first before I get to it, which is the administration has secured the release of over two dozen Americans. No, I think, I think, I, I, I know, I'm, saying that you have it. I, I know. Uh, I'm just saying only one of them was a basketball player and. And it, months now. Yeah, but in right. those two cases that I just mentioned, the determination was made extremely quickly. Some, and I will say sometimes the nature of the detention makes and the de makes the decision. The ma I, I, I will say makes it makes the decision extremely easy. In other cases, there are um, uh, more factors that we have to look at. But I will say that regardless of her status, we have called on her publicly to be released, and we the secretary has pressed. Cambodian officials yeah, privately I, for her I'm release. I'm not saying that you guys haven't I I understand. called for her release and you haven't done that. But the fact of the matter is, is that it has been months since she was detained and months since she was imprisoned and months since I first asked about this and months since it was under review. And yet, in high profile cases, this decision seems to be made very, very quickly. I would say that in some cases, the 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 nature, the the facts of the case yeah, make it extreme. No, there's a lot more attention paid to that. Right? I, I reject that characterization completely. So it is the facts and the circumstances of the case that make it very clear. Of, of, of a non-high-profile case where someone has been declared wrongfully detained I, within a month or two of their of their detention. I I will tell you that one, um, with, with with with. I think you're looking at it the wrong way. I think the fact that we have returned, as I said, over two dozen I'm Americans, the vast majority of them are not celebrities or basketball. The, the, it is the, 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 this department and the United States government apply just as much pressure and apply just as much force 
for every American that is wrongfully detained or that we believe otherwise should be released, uh, as, as we do for celebrities so, or anyone else. So and the record backs so that up. There, so there is no difference uh, if a case is transferred to uh, Spiha and someone is declared wrongfully detained there, and, and, and Spiha takes, takes there, it over from there are different affairs. There are different yes, there, assets there are and interests, and, yes, and, that we bring and, to and bear. You know that there are. There, but and so and it gets and it gets different priority level attention from from inside the administration. I would say there is and no you, higher and level. You, you know it does. Th there is th it is they are treated. Uh, there are different assets that are brought to bear. But with respect to this case, there is no higher. Uh, uh, there is no higher priority we can make it or higher pressure we can bring to bear than the Secretary of State himself personally raising a case with I'm his counterparts. I'm suggesting that he hasn't done that or that you guys haven't been I'm trying. Just, I'm just wondering but, why it's taking so long for you guys to make this kind of a determination when, in other cases, more high-profile cases, it's been done I, very, the, the, very the, quickly. The difference between the cases is not the the profile, the relative profile. This is a very well, high. Pro, this well, is, well, I would say this is a very high profile case, and the difference in the cases right, is, is not the, is not the. I I am not asked. No. I'm not asked questions about <laughs> most of the Americans who are wrongfully detained. But that exactly. doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that we're not working on them with all okay. uh, with every bit of right. uh, 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 strength that we can. All right. Okay. I think we'll wrap Thank it there. You. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>